welcome everybody. This is the um, Rochester Select Board meeting of January 8th, 2024, not 2023. Yeah, you got it right. And um, <clears throat> this has been um, posted in three places publicly on the website and emailed to interested parties so we can move forward legally. And we're going to start with the minutes from the prior meeting of December 21st, which I was not. No, I was on that. No, I wasn't. I see my name's on there, but it says absent afterwards. So, <laughs> so um, I'll leave that to Pat and Frank to discuss because I wasn't here. I have read over the meetings. It was a short meeting that time. So, um, Frank, are you are you with us? Do you want to? Uh, I, I moved. I haven't read the minutes, so we may want to just wait until next next meeting. All right, I'll we'll table that. <clears throat> All right, then for um on the new business, um, do we have folks on Zoom from the? No, they're not going to get here till seven fifteen. Seven fifteen. So I'm gonna um. Slow down and, and <laughs> talk about <laughs> talk about the, the uh, town of Rochester fee schedule, which for um, the last probably couple years in the budget uh, meetings we've talked about maybe these fees are a little little light, and we did some research from other towns, and we're not talking exorbitant here, but like the um, um, building permit or zoning permit fees was. $25 and we're going to double that to 50, which is not going to break the bank or stop anyone from building a project, but it will do a, a, give a, a, a very small nudge towards keeping our budget, you know, in moderation and also in keeping in with what is realistic in today's building. So I could, um, so a lot of these are set by the state, so we really don't have much control, but the, the zoning permit fees, um, we're talking about the building permit at $50 and $100 for a driveway permit and a subdivision permit for a minor or major at $50, a conditional use waiver request permit. What is a conditional use waiver request? I guess yeah. that's uh, if you're having conditional use and you're, you're like you've changed the use of your property from That's residential right. to like maybe now you have a business so it has to go through right so things that aren't specifically um dealt with in the zoning regulations there would be um uh, conditional use which would cover which would mean we'd need to talk about it some and so that has um gone up to 20 big time <laughs> And open trench and road boring in the town right of way permit up to $50. And then for a municipal sewer water hookup permit, which is a little more involved, they're talking $750. I didn't I Perfect. didn't add anything to that because I and haven't had a both, chance. You should have one for commercial and one for residential. Oh, I didn't mm -hmm. see that. They yeah. were. Okay, so $750 was for the... Does that sound like probably 750 is for the water? Cool. And then the sewer is worth more than the water. And then you got the hookup fee for commercial, which I think that was a thousand anyway, or 1200. Oh, gosh. Mm, and yes. the water part was, I don't know, you have to look it up. All right, so we'll have to um, edit, that. edit that. So that's a, a start. We won't approve them tonight, but we were talking about these probably coming into play when the, the after the in the next fiscal year, July one. July one. So that gives us right. some time mm -hmm. to nail nail well, down. The big thing with both of those, you're gonna have to be there for inspection. I mean, you have to be there for the when the. the Main gets packed, and the other main gets packed. You have to be there to do yep. an air test. Yep. There's a lot more to it than sign the piece of paper. All right. Well, we'll um, <clears throat> we'll get that a little more specific. Okay. Martha has a question. Um, I just yep. wanted right. to check and make sure um that if I said that the the, the board was going to to um, look into um making specific um fees, you know uh. uh 
specific amounts yeah. for the fees and would uh, approve them at a future meeting? Yeah, you could say that way. We're looking at um, updating our municipal fees and we're going to, um, that's in process and we'll probably update that at a future meeting and hoping to um, make that change applicable at the beginning of the next, next fiscal year. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, thanks for doing the research to um, dig up where we stand and relative to the kind of all over the place, aren't they, with different fees, <laughs> yeah. depending on how fancy a town it is. Yeah. <laughs> So let's see that we're gonna. So um, the topic of the regional coordinator, um, that was something that came up at the meeting that I wasn't at, correct? And and um, there was a request from Two Rivers, I believe, for um, to a consortium of towns to fund a uh, a position. It wasn't necessarily from Two Rivers. Um, it was from another entity. This regional coordinator was going to be um, overseen by Two Rivers. Overseen by Two Rivers, yeah. But um, it was, I don't have that with me. Um, it was a whole different entity that is, that is a startup, I would say. And what they were looking to do was hire a person to be their coordinator for, I think it was 10 towns, a lot of different mm -hmm. towns in the area. So it was a regional coordinator. Do you know how many towns it was involved with that? Is this for the Intermunicipal Energy Resiliency Energy Coordinator? Yes, Intermunicipal. Yes, I have, uh, I have some new information on that as well. And as um, unfortunately, the number of towns now has dropped. <clears throat> Bethel, Field, Rochester, Royalton, and West Fairley have not said no. Have not. But said everyone no. else has said no. Said no. So and that was five towns you just mentioned, right? The town meeting, mm -hmm. um, and there because of dropouts, we see the divide, the divided cost increasing. To uh, Rochester's uh, portion would be $19,085. So basically um, doubling what they were asking before. They were 13. 10. 10, yeah, but 10 this year, 13 next year. It's basically doubling it, yeah. yeah. Go back as far. So what, what was you going to coordinate? That was my question. I'm going to do the work of an energy coordinator in the towns involved. Um, rather than having a single appointed one, and many towns actually don't have it because they don't have anybody to, to do it. Um, our town plan and the energy efficiency um, appendix follows the state's um, comprehensive energy plan. And it's a uh, tall order for most volunteers and, and uh, communities in the state to be able to understand uh, what needs to be done. Um, I'm fulfilling the role of uh, energy coordinator in in Rochester as a volunteer with no pay. And I don't want this new position at all. But if Rochester approves the position, um, I would hope to continue to work for the board and assist the energy coordinator here and see if we can really get things wrapped up. Well, that kind of answers my next question is, are you willing to continue on doing the the awesome work you've been doing as the volunteer energy coordinator for the for the town. Yes, even if you uh, agree that we should hire a regional coordinator as well. Well, the um, conversation that we were having at the last budget meeting, um, after we successfully notched the um, municipal tax rate from 24% increase down to where are we at? 13. 13, 13. which was, that was a big stab and that um was pretty much once we heard that the town of randolph was backing out of joining in on this consortium consortium um, we anticipated that fee to go up yeah but not as high as now yeah. that it's so we're 
I think in addition to Randall, there have been a couple other towns yeah. who dropped out just recently. I think and, that um, uh, we're contemplating being another one of those towns that would drop out of that. Which one? Us. Us. Yeah. Yeah. Us. yeah. yeah. Well, we, we, yeah. You know, the only commitment I heard being made was to put the article out there to see whether the voters would approve that. Right. Um, right. So there was it was going to be a, 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 a one of those at the end of the at the end of the uh, and um and we don't think that we can recommend to the voters to even consider it. Especially now that it's twice what we were thinking. Which towns dropped out? Uh, it's easier for me to tell you which towns, which towns did not. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Bethel is still in the works. Brookfield, Rochester, maybe. Uh, Royalton and West Fairland. So this was that's a, not going to sustain that person's income at one hundred and fifty thousand so dollars a year. Stockbridge, no. Randolph. I don't know whether you went up to. Isn't going in it though. No. And no. Hancock and Granville were they? They were, doing that. they were not doing it. And Stockbridge. Uh, Stockbridge is not. You know, I think they at one time were involved, but are not now. Well. I think in that, light of, oh, hello? No, go ahead. Go ahead, Dune. No, that's all right. We we miss you. We listen to your voice. <laughs> yeah. I th I think in light of that pertinent information, I think it's um the opportune time for us to go out to if if more towns were involved, I I can see a path forward, but I don't see a path forward with so many towns dropping out. Yeah, with this personally, but yeah, Jeff, could you speak to what are some of the complexities of of what's asked of you by the state to in performing that? Well, uh, by 2050, and I won't be around to see that project through. Uh, yeah. By 2050, we're supposed to be having using 90 percent renewable energy for all of our functions. We have to electrify. In order to make electrification, even we um, have to improve the efficiencies. So even on the uh, the town highway vehicles. Yeah. Okay. okay. We yeah, had just be, as an aside. Yeah, um, there are some. There are some <laughs> exorbitantly expensive yeah. um, pilot project trucks out there um, right now, but uh, that's going to be a hard nut to crack. Yeah, it is going to be. We um actually put someone up, fed him, and and gave him a place to crash the other night because his electric car couldn't make the trip from Middlebury to Hanover and back. He's headed back over Middlebury Gap, and he's like, "I'm not going to make it." And he came back and knocked on our doors. It's like, "Hey, you guys, yeah. can I plug my car in?" And um, because his credit card wouldn't work on the fast chargers down yes. Oh, oh wait, why? Yes, I. Don't know why, but that, a, that's we had, yeah, we, had had a a we had a house guest with an electric vehicle. They went down there, and my son went with them. And the machine said that you that, and I may get this garbled, but there was something about having to be a member with an account. You have to have the proper app to run that machine, and if you have cellular connection, you could download that app and join that club and then run that machine. So but if you have Verizon, you don't have, it. You don't have well, it's it. It's not to have to set up the account for this for our house guest. Oh, so you it, were yeah, but it, that's a awkward. That's a that's an issue. It is an issue. Um I had a guy come into the shop that is an electric vehicle. Business? Well in an electric vehicle um and he um I said he said yeah I said I'm using your chargers down there. Or I tried to use them, but they didn't. They didn't work. And he said he makes a point of everywhere he goes, and he knows where he sees a charger. He stops and tries to use it. And he said more often than not, they he can't get him to work, which is yeah, interesting. Marvin wasn't able to get him to work either. Yeah. when he was here all summer. So that was a Green Mountain Power initiation to do that but they're not the company that's running it i don't know they contract with flow out of canada mm. yeah do you flow. know how how fast is a fast charger 
charge? How long does, I mean, how fast does it well, it, take? Well, it will vary dependent upon the vehicle and also the vary dependent upon how much of your discharge. Oh, uh, and how much you're allowed to charge your battery as well. Uh, my particular electric vehicle got a recall and uh, they limited my battery to 80% capacity uh, because of a fire risk. They've now done software fixes for that. Um, and if, were, if there are no problems experienced in 6,200 miles, then I'll be fine uh, and can charge to 100%. But if not, they have to replace the battery. So there's a that's with Chevrolet, and there's a class action lawsuit. I mean, we get fourteen hundred dollars back yeah. because I didn't get the mileage they promised. So by um, twenty fifty, it's also winter time. The cold, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 The Chevy Bolt that I have is the worst one where it loses half its range. Mm -hmm. um, other cars, the, you know, there are other cars out there that do much better in terms of cold weather battery power retention. Yeah, I'm sure they'll continue to improve, but I, well, I'm not sure about trusting our, our um, plow trucks to that. And no, you're not, they're not ready yet. No, they're not ready yet. Um, but so if there are problems with those two things down there that none of us really know about, shouldn't somebody in town know what's going on? Uh, or should the company well, know? Should there be some kind of um, directions? There should be directions because there are places to access free Wi-Fi in town. So even if it's in the middle of the night, someone could go out in front of the library and hook up to the Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. But they would need to have to the proper instructions to you know, that some, because um, what good is it if it's um, just pissing people off? Yeah. Well, I can uh, I can give a call to GMP and bring that to their attention and see. I think if it'd be good if both of you gave a call. I mean, what the heck, you know, make him make some noise. Be interesting to have a report too to see what kind of uh, usage it's yeah. Uh, yeah. given. Yeah, yeah, any like, and I've also seen just recently a couple of people charge that they could give us about it. Yeah, no, I've seen people using it, but they must. They they're they're not, they, there's one of the things that was really messed up. And affirmative energy when this all started should have standardized the plug in the socket. Yeah. So really all yeah. Yeah. That'd be too easy. We have all of these different proprietary charging systems out there. What is down here, um, they're really, even though there are four um, cords, you can only use one at a time. Uh, so we can charge two. Well, I'm saying this in a confusing way. We've got two pedestals. Each has um, two sockets. One is a, um, oh gosh, it, it, it's a for Nissan. And Japanese um, mm -hmm. EVs right. that will work with that is Chatham, is what it's called. The other is the CCS, um, uh, and I forget the uh, acronym, but basically you've got the Chatham system and you've got the CCS. Okay. Most of the cars in the market today are CCS, and Tesla is a completely different Tesla animal. They're all Tesla, crazy. though, can't, you can get an, a, um, an adapter for about 150 bucks. For your Tesla that will go into the CCS. Uh, yeah, GMP was all over the map kind of in, in terms of telling us what they were going to do and what we wound up with. Um, the, and I guess part of that is because of the uh, Public Utility Commission um, not wanting, even though the, the uh, number of cars that are using the Chatamo is much, much smaller. Um, the Public Utility Commission didn't want to leave them alone in the lurch. So that's hmm. what we got. Are there enough instructions down there that, that a, 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 an uninformed person who was coming into town needed to charge could figure all this out? No. It doesn't look like it. <laughs> yeah, the, part of the issue is that generally um, most people are a little informed about what their car is doing because if they're not, they're going to yeah, run right into an issue. You would think that they they would. Um, yeah. And then having the lack of of other carriers than AT and T. I mean, we're all used to having AT and T because we know it works here. But a lot of people don't. 
don't, and then they're like in the wild west. Yeah, interesting. Well, yeah, I think it'd be great, Frank, if you called, and Jeff, if you called too, and um, heck, anybody else wants to call too, and say, hey, and they'll probably just um, say, oh, call Flow. But if, if GMP is the one that that chartered that and, and recommended this company, they should get the feedback that it's um it's, it's problematic. You have to speak Canadian or something to move <laughs> I think a lot of people too, when they, they come up north and it's colder in the winter, uh, yeah. they have to run their heaters. And so I know that there's a lot of electric vehicle owners that now have blankets in their cars so that they they don't use up their battery on their heater. Um so <laughs> It's uh I have a gas car that I have a blanket in because the heater doesn't work very good. <laughs> 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 okay, we're yeah. there. Okay. You can get a good sea heater yeah. that uh doesn't use anywhere near the juice that the uh, heat the whole cabin does. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, heck if you can park it in a heated garage, that probably would do I know you're driving out into the cold weather, but just starting with a warm battery would probably yeah. help. Well, I don't know what that does in the environment. Makes a projection as to what your uh, range is, yeah. and that's in part based by the on the temperature. But if you start with eighty percent, you're already down. <laughs> yep. If you start at eighty percent, then you lose half of that. Yeah. That's essentially my experience with it. <laughs> However. I still get 90% of my travel, my driving done well, with it, and I charge in my own garage. Yeah. So, so there you I go. No, no, we're moving in though. the right direction. Yeah. Just have some growing pains. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, you know, trucks, uh, the F 150, that will be the first thing that we see plowing. Um, mm -hmm. What's that? F 150 is not a plow truck. It, I know, it's not big enough to do no, that's not most of the job here. But that's fair. Yeah. But that one is uh, got a very significant battery range, and uh, that'll probably be the first thing that. Are you really still answer. Are you still buying a Lightning? Are you, didn't you want say? No, I, I. Okay. Not that bracket. Okay. <laughs> uh, I uh, my son did, and uh, he's been very pleased with it after one kind of hectic ride to the ski and back. But mm -hmm. after that, he's figured it out. Um, what I've done, um, as I, I mean, 90% of my travel with the, the Bolt EV, and we just recently uh, traded in the Escape we had and got a, uh, a Ford Maverick, which is a hybrid, and it's front-wheel drive hybrid that's rated for um, 42 miles to the gallon. So that will be my long term yes. a long distance vehicle until such time as the charging systems in this country mm -hmm. in better shape. Ford Maverick. Huh? I got a ride in a Ford Maverick from Chicago to Anchorage, Alaska once a long time ago. It was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. We made it. Yeah. <laughs> but um so we got 26 years until the state's going to, if they keep their current um, projections, they're going to want us to have 90% of our energy in the municipality renewable. Um, the, the the issue with the regional uh, or any municipal uh, per person is this is a big job. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a huge job. And I'm willing to continue doing it, but I don't feel like I'm even scratching the surface. Yeah. And that's after 20 plus years in the industry. Matt, are they coming out with the electric ambulance? Not yet. Not yet. Not Not yet. yet. <laughs> Would the solution seem to be a solar charging? Is, is there any is there any hope that that would um, come about at all? Fast charging. I, well, no. I mean, yeah, but it's a it would be a very significant draw on the system. The fast charging. On the sun, the solar charging. Well, well it wouldn't no. be happening right now. <laughs> You're terrible, no. right? <laughs> well, we're in the wrong we're, part of the world. Actually, I think that will be in the resiliency island. Well, the resiliency is yeah. going to be showing battery backup off the. Yeah. 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 
Well, we really appreciate that you taking this, you know, because it's um keep working the bugs out of the systems. Yeah, and we're not expecting you to like, you know, bend over backwards to do everything you can to fulfill that role, but the but your steady progress mm -hmm. on identifying projects and tackling them at, at your pace is much appreciated and, and yeah. I mean, much of what it involves is assisting other people to do changes. I mean, and, and we're seeing quite a bit of change in our market right now. I don't know if anybody is aware of it, but uh, the whole barn up at North Hall Farm on the uh, west side is covered with uh, PV panels, and that's uh, believed to be sufficient uh, wattage up there to cover all of their operation. Wow. Well. And it's also surprising when you look at uh, the uh, Vermont Energy Atlas and you see how many people now are using solar in their own properties. And you, you must see it uh, in the real estate business. Uh, yes. Places you never thought of. Like, I just took a course on how to present efficient houses mm -hmm. and how to measure a house for its, its uh, climate climate footprint, solar, it, there's, there's, yeah, there's, you'll be able to Craig rate Foley a house on a scale. That Did, what's Craig, that? Did Craig Foley teach that class? Uh, it was online. Yeah. Yeah. So they'll, they'll actually come out with a scale so that your house is rated on a scale, I think of one to 30 about how efficient it is. So with the solar panels today, what is the expected longevity of a panel? Oh, 15 to 20 years? Yeah, 20 years. And they're not done at 20 years, then their production begins to fall off and they are recyclable. Mm -hmm. So I would um, I would venture to, to say that um, we would remove this option to, to join up to partially to pay for the... Year. We have to this year. We would love to reconsider it in the future, but this is not the year for that. Well, could, you mean we have to say no this we year? We have to say oh, no. Oh, I thought you were saying we have to pay to this year. No. Um, yeah. On another That's year, we can, we can maybe present it, but another year. Yeah. yeah. With the education so, we tax also expected to go up yeah. substantially. Do you agree, Frank? Yes, I do. Yep. All right. I don't well, see that we have any choice with the other towns dropping out. I think it's especially in light of our budget woes this year. It's yeah, yeah. And, and I think I I think a, a plan going forward would be to entertain it again in the in the coming year. So you remember that it went up four thousand dollars. We had the ten or eleven this year, and then it was going up to fourteen. So this nineteen would be going up four thousand. Right, more. More, more. Which, yeah. which likely right. would have come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we have, um, Terry, have you got, we're going to, um, we're waiting for some folks to zoom in for the emergency services discussion. So you want to talk any about the um, plumbing and sewer and all that stuff? Everything seems to be working. Nobody's complaining. I think Martha, you have a question I hear. I was just going to say, when I zoomed across the top, I see Daniel Sargent on, is, is online. I don't know if he's the person you're waiting for. No. The, no, we're waiting for um, uh, members of the select boards of Hancock oh, and okay. Granville. Yeah. Okay. I just thought, you, wait, when you said emergency services, I thought because of him with the... Yeah, no, that's part of it, but we're not, not there yet, yeah. There, um, I believe we got half an hour to kill before they can yeah, make it. Yeah, Granville right? is having their select board meeting, so oh. that's why we were pushed to seven fifteen. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. In a different timing. Um, don't have anyone here from the library to speak. No, oh, Jeff. I'm just going to say uh, we don't have to go through any of this material about the changes, and um, I, without any uh, malice or. Um, I don't know what the right word is, but no problem with your decision. I'm going to go home to dinner. Ah, okay. <laughs> you don't have to ask me. It <laughs> Thank you um, I just wanted for to coming in. No. Okay with the decision. I understand it. Uh, and it's um, but 
more we push down the road. Yep. Yeah, true, true. Keep knocking on the door. But we'll keep waiting for um, technology to get a little bit more evolved. Um, nobody from the library, the highway crew is, is um, resting up for tomorrow, probably. Um, there's been some issues there. Uh, they broke down a couple of times. The 550's down again. Uh, same issue it's had ever since we bought it, uh, transmission. Uh, John broke down with his truck, uh, was able to make the repairs. He blew a hose and uh, his uh, bed chain broke for the sander, uh, but he repaired it. And hopefully we'll have a little better luck going forward. So... He's, uh, like he has, he is talking with Ford about the transmission on the uh, 550. Uh, it's run over on the hours uh, for the warranty, but because this has been an incurring problem, um, we're hoping that they'll honor their piece of equipment here, but there's no telling what they're going to do, so but he's got some numbers and he's going to make some calls and we'll go from there. It's about all we can do. Yeah. This next storm might be a little heavier. Yeah. We supposedly have a, a good blow coming our way. Yeah. So make sure their chainsaws are working. Yeah. Um, Kristen, you got any updates on Grant? I stuff? don't. You don't? No. Nope. All right. Um, well, I can. You submitted a grant. Oh, yeah. Tell us about the grant you submitted. Oh, yeah, Lois. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. You and Julie did. I'm just trying to use up time. Yeah. Oh, is no. that it? Oh, mute. Um, we submitted a grant to uh, the Urban Forestry, UVM Urban Forestry. It's a title about this long, and it's a, to d address the canopy on the park. They want the canopy to be diverse species. Mm -hmm. So we have talked with Cobble Creek Nursery. Uh, we have seven or eight trees that we have earmarked that are going to come down. favorably grow over there. We also had the arborist come and review the trees on the park to determine the ones that were dead, dying, and need to go and those that perhaps can get by with a pruning. So this, do I understand correctly that we think a lot of the the younger trees on the park are, are ailing because they were not planted, the root ball was not broken up suitably, they're you know, there pot bound? One or two that have that right. circled. And it could also be where they came from. Yeah. Yeah. Because if yeah. they're not planted and the roots spread out, they'll, they'll encircle the trunk. Yeah, yeah. But the trees that were planted last year from the grant, they're all doing very well, yeah. very well. Thank you, Frank. Frank was the uh, the main person who kept the trees alive that last year, yeah. watering all the time, keeping track of his time. Isn't it great to be retired, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> he probably wouldn't know. Ooh, go. Yeah. He also <laughs> went out and cleaned up all the dead branches of things yeah. that had fallen down and in that one of those December storms. I didn't get them all. <laughs> well, there's still time then. This is a one one grant where the, we put in for $5,000, which means that we also have to supply at least $5,000 of volunteer work. Mm, okay. And just kind of looking at it quickly, if everybody cooperates the way we hope they will, we will be easily over $5,000 worth of volunteer help. So yeah, we're always looking for new here. volunteers yeah. to help keep our park the most beautiful in the state of Vermont. Yes. <laughs> and the safest for people who are using the yes. parks. Yeah, so right. Dead limbs yeah. don't fall on them. <laughs> so we've got well, the um um our 2024 mileage certificate for um for Rochester, which is due on February 20th. Um, we've got time, but I don't believe there's any changes on that, are there? I believe so. You believe so changes or you believe yeah. so no changes? There, there's a change. 
there's a change. All right, so we'll work yes, on I, that. Yes, I gotta, I gotta reiterate that with the state, but I think there is a change there. All right, cool. Well, well, that will be it. on the class three section um, on Jerusalem Hill. The maps are being drawn up. Uh, the new maps are drawn up here. Uh, they should be in the process now. Uh, mm -hmm. And we did have a change on that. We upgraded the Jerusalem Hill from Rocky Road to up to where it ends, uh, which is up by Stuart Browns. Mm -hmm. So... And, but I have to make a double check on that to make sure that that went through. There was no need to bring it to the town because it was considered a class three road to start with. It was just co considered a nuts road. So it was a change in, in uh, how we address it. So, and I'm not yeah. sure if that adds to our mileage or not. Okay. I have to, well, have to look at that to make sure. Well, we got we got a month, a little more than a month to figure it out. So yeah, then I'll take care of that. So I have something I could share since we're still waiting for uh, more people to show up. Um, you guys remember Abe Collins, right? Mm -hmm. Grew up in town here. Well, he's um, he's very active in the um, in the realm of um, agriculture and and healing. Well, healing our our watershed, healing land. He's been um, designed a, a piece of equipment. He calls it a rip sower. It's a tool for going in and kind of regenerating topsoil. It'll cut down mm -hmm. deep and actually, you know, dig into the the hard pan and distribute seeds and fertilizer at the same time, and as a way of um, regenerating topsoil. And he has. Um, with the help of several um, other organizations, put together a um, it's a land care congress, which is actually happening in town as we speak. And they have um, a public dinner um, open to the community tomorrow, um, Tuesday night at six thirty at Pierce Hall. It's a healing our watershed home, a toast to Rochester, and this is. Um, um local steak and potato bar i've never been to a potato bar but i love to stick it out sounds good and sides and there's a suggested donation of 15 dollars to benefit pierce hall and um abe is representing the land care cooperative and alvina harvey is with the white river natural resource conservation district and rcd if you don't want to say all those words um, there's Christine Disson from Harvard Law and um, Katharina Pistor from Columbia Law. They have about 40 people gathered um, doing uh, workshops and, and um, brainstorming about how to go about um, addressing um, climate issues. And um, mm. it could be an interesting, interesting um dinner i think there'll be more than just food but probably some talking i think you have to pre-register have to pre-register um i don't know that's um when i um they handed me this and said hey mention it at the select board yeah, meeting i so, think you have to pre-register yeah. so they know who's they know coming. you're coming it doesn't leave a uh, uh to get. <laughs> yeah i don't see any phone number to register but i'm sure that you could um I'll track it down all. Oh, um, White River NRCD at gmail.com. That's a White River spelled out NRCD Gmail. So, yeah, it should be a, um, if your power goes out in the storm, you could you know, haul on down to town and get fed. And, and as long as it, you that power doesn't go off the air. Yeah, right. So, right. is this designed for farms? Um, agricultural? It, it or is, is something to do predominantly. Um, predominantly agriculture and, you know, agricultural and farms, but it could be um, anyone with some land that they wanted to start to reclaim. And, and um, a lot of what they're talking about planting is um, uh, for pollinators to support pollinators, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of concern about the collapse yeah. of uh, pollinators. And if, the and if they go, um, we probably go too. 
Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's um anyway, I thought that was worth mentioning. So Pretty we got some a... time to go. Um I um I think Martha had a question. Yeah, Martha. Yeah, I mean obviously it's going to be over with before the paper comes out, so I can't publicize it in in but I just wondered if um if I called you at the shop tomorrow or something, you might have um um Abe Collins' contact info, like an email or something. Or do you know where I get it from? Just I thought maybe he I could, could. He could write something for next week or Becky, something. They're still there. Becky right Donay now. has all that. Oh, Becky Donay would have all that because they've been working oh, very okay. close with her. But if you can't get it from her, I'm sure I could um, get it um, with you. They're in town um, through um, through the storm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I don't um, walk around too much if the if it's slippery because I'm scared to falling because yeah, of my walker. Yeah. I just uh, no, it's um. I, I'll it's contact, Be I'll email Becky Donay. I have her email. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry to bother you. Okay. okay, great. Um, that was the one little extra credit thing I had to add to the meeting. Um, how about you, Matt? Got any interesting <laughs> ambulance stories to share? <laughs> We're his 50th year. To That's share. right. I saw that yes, in the paper. That's that pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Senator Welch. Came by last Friday with a uh, WCX Express to announce a new bill that they're pushing um, in I, Rocksville. I saw him but just briefly, but I didn't know what he was doing. I heard them say he was there. Yep, it's a bill that they're presenting for patients that we see that are no transports. Um, a lot of the ambulance services won't bill for no transport. So this bill will allow us to bill Medicare itself. Um, we go and assist somebody. Uh -huh. fell or don't need to be transported but need help but um, you still had to roll but we still roll yeah um, it's a nation issue and uh so hopefully it goes through because it should help the budgets drastically mm. we did 375 or something like that last year yeah wow. and if the bill went through no transport wow 398 yeah so you if the bill goes through, they didn't you, put a dollar amount on what we'd be able to But you bill, would be able to bill, bill at some directly through Medicare. Yep. Yeah. Oh my God, that's great. Um, Even if they were not a Medicare client? No, it would be only Medicare oh, client. Medicare. But it would be a big start. We have a large population. Yes, we do. Yeah. And right now you don't you're not allowed to bill anything if there's no transport. We used to in the past, but we never saw any revenue from it. Um, and they would go to collections, and then we bill for fifty dollars for no transport, thirty dollars in collections, and they would take like thirty five percent. Mm -hmm. So by the end of it, it wasn't it wasn't no, worth the effort. No, we decided not to do that. Nine no. fifteen years ago now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fifty years. Okay. Hmm. It's come away since then. <laughs> Pictures yeah. of the different ambulances. The, the Herald did a great article on it. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. and this week's Herald will have an article from Friday as well. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Because of Peter Welch or just. Yeah, and that's where he announced. The Do we have Scott anybody Peter. else on there? Scott Gillette. I'm Is watching that? very closely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we okay. could jump the gun a little bit. Yeah, but no. Bruce Bruce was between seven and seven thirty, so that's why I shot for seven fifteen. Oh jeez. But they're having their grant their select board meeting, so it's budget season for them. That? They kind of take care of all their select board meetings. On their select board meetings. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, they could exactly run on a little bit. <laughs> So the so next budget um meeting we have a meeting tomorrow. No, Wednesday. 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 Oh, tomorrow. tomorrow's Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Tomorrow's Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. It feels like Friday. It looks like all day plowing and you get all spun around. Yeah. 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 And we're hoping. So we're getting pretty pretty close though. Huh? Yeah. And when is the um does the book it's need to go out to the printer? The twenty, not before the eighteenth of January. Okay. I have it down for the twenty second, Monday, the twenty second, two weeks. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, well, we got it down. Did so you I yes, I forgot your report. Well, I mean, I got the together. agenda for the they school meeting. Yeah, for tonight. <laughs> was that? For the and in it um, was the tax sheet. Well, on the party department, they already have them. So we um, we didn't take it because it was oh, with so we had two days. Or what two this days, version days, of days. the tax rate will be yeah, as of today. Fixed, but yeah, what was that? Not to too good. Yeah. 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 Okay. Go to go to not agenda. Go to reports, yeah, the CPR, uh, and then go down to tax sheet, which is close to the bottom. Day, yeah, a day. All the CPR RSUD worksheet yeah, up above it. Okay. Yeah, that's the tuition. Is Oh, yeah, it looks like ours, but the numbers are bigger. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Look at the percent of increase. Funny, not funny. What's the percent of increase? 14.55. Yeah. Is that is that direct to us or does the state take it and do one uh, increase for everybody at once the same? No, I think that's that's a, that would be I ours. I think that's pretty much our SUD, but I'm not sure that they're going to approve it tonight. Really? But it's a draft, mm -hmm. yeah. enough to make you quiver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's one. I keep telling them you need to get all these down the mall. Yeah, and no, on top of the yeah, so the big which is why municipally two or three. We're doing our best. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. There's a lot of discussion about education going on right now, ever since the yep. news broke about the 18% increase. Yes, mm. Separate us. They just said 18 for, to make 14 look better. 14. Yeah. <laughs> better. I think it was 18 and a half. That was like said. statewide, they were saying, right? Something like that. That's what the but governor said. At, uh, and the per pupil cost was going to be 25. I, I, I wonder if this is going to trigger another round of school consolidation. That's what he said in his speech. Oh, yeah. Which there are one, there, there could, there could are our elementary ways school to deal with it. Could both Stockbridge and Rochester could be in danger. Oh, we could buy both buildings. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, it's we'll all that's a better one. <laughs> we'll have to stand our ground about where we stand on that. Yeah. <laughs> well. They talked a lot about um, you, the way that town, different towns had used ARPA money, and maybe they hadn't yeah, used it quite as wi wisely as other towns. Um, they, many towns put it into infrastructure rather than hiring more teachers and going on trips and doing things like that. Well, the schools got ARPA money and the towns got ARPA money, so... Yeah, our, our ARPA money was spent on our municipality, not on our school. Yeah, but you know, but the schools are going to sit down and just figure They upgraded the boiler. The they put in a pellet said, boiler. Yeah, they did, which started this week. So, you know, we're, we're seeing that they did some physically, but I guess it's like four um students to every one either teacher or administrator or aide and it's the ratio is too small it should be six or seven students per paid employee is that here in vermont it's one to four wow that's so, um that was like one to 35 on that class. Yeah. <laughs> one teacher in the whole class now you have so a teacher and then you have you know um, aides and a lot of special education yeah. and all of that. So there's a there's a lot of mandated things mm -hmm. that are built in that 
So uh, perhaps should be revisited or high school. There were five yeah. teachers <laughs> for I mean I'm not doing it. You had the same math teacher through every all the grades. Yeah. Well, plus they did other things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was math. <laughs> <clears throat> so as we work through the budget and finance committee process, we're hoping to deliver the most favorable increase possible. <laughs> I'd like to see everybody come to town meeting this year. There's a car pulling up. Is everybody zooming in or could somebody be driving in? Somebody could be driving in. Or maybe that's my Grubhub I just ordered. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Want me to give you something? <laughs> Open the uh, bed and breakfast by staying in the house. When they get there. <laughs> Oh, that's the best. He's going to have the best yeah, yeah. meal when he gets there. Which snow did you get down here? Sounds like about the same. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's been uh, nice and uh, lovely. Yeah. 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 Hello. Hi there. Hi, Bruce. Hello. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for inviting Oh, yeah, we weren't sure. You can bring that chair right around yeah. over here. Yeah. Yeah. You'll just be part of it. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I just sent Scott an email so we can we can get going. We've we've kind of just been milking the clock a little bit. So mm -hmm. thank you for the hustle. Kickoff is in about 40 minutes, so <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, probably not. Martha. <laughs> Hi, I heard this man's name was Bruce, but I didn't get the last name. <laughs> hi, H Y D E. Bruce, hi. Randall Select Board. He's got it. Let's see if Scott's, I can call him. So you guys, Bruce, you're at a select board meeting just now, right? Yep. But Scott, no. He's not. No, I All think right. there's our two states. All right. So, yeah, give him a call. Maybe he's going to zoom in. You guys still uh, allow Zoom, don't you? Yeah, we and do. Daniel Sargent is on Zoom, too. Yep, yeah. we see him. Yeah, so it's... um. Yeah, it's uh, I could have done that and watched the football game. Yeah, you no, can, I know. You can still get all this round down. Yeah, it's a tough story. We're all oh, even started. started. Yeah, yeah. all of you watch us there. Good. Yeah. Are you going to be dialing in by way of Zoom to our meeting? Um, what? Yeah, football. Okay. Well, okay, no, we just not, well, we needed geez. to know whether we were still waiting on you. I got to get rid of that dish. Oh, geez. I know it's terrible. It's like a thing of the past. I've been trying to tell you. Okay, you got it. Well, if if you wanted to connect, you could come in on Zoom. We sent you an invite. No, I've seen you in action. I don't want nothing to do with that. We work somewhere. <laughs> yeah, like in Canada. Did you get your Wi-Fi password figured out? Yeah, I did. Okay. All by yourself, you did. really. You put it, okay, put it in your iPhone. All right. Yeah. You're, you're running an iPhone. Yeah. And you I'll let you know. Bye bye. <laughs> He's not going to be able to join us. He's babysitting his kid. He's babysitting his <laughs> kid. Okay. Okay. Kids are allowed at the meetings. But anyway, <laughs> and Bruce, thanks for coming. And, and basically, we wanted to <clears throat> and start a conversation between, well, two out of three is not bad. We've got, you know, the three towns. And, and Matt had, had really requested this, suggested this, that it would be good to have a conversation to, um really figure out where we all stand with the um you know the emergency services. emergency services and um i guess a question i have for um dan and matt have you guys had any conversation about possibly 
joining and getting underneath one one roof in this situation? Oh, we have. Um, I spoke with Dan. I believe it was actually between Christmas and New Year's. Mm -hmm. um, he had recouped a conversation he had with the state. And correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, Dan, but um, the state more or less implied that they'd like to see Warba have the license versus trying to start a new entity to drink support. Um, and then we we're going to start discussing it, but after I said it's a budget meeting, and I think everybody on this side of the hill kind of needs to be on the same plan and maybe make some goals of two years, five years, um, and work towards a transporting truck versus just getting a truck and parking it somewhere and mm -hmm. hope people come. Um, yeah. And Matt, right? yeah. Uh, the conversation that I had with the state, uh, they've they've been pushing for larger entities rather than small volunteer organizations. Um, you know, and we we discussed just between you and I what what that's kind of done to the state and what we're dealing with now. Uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily that they wanted Werva to oversee the the entire project, but um, they they would prefer to have a larger entity manage it. Can I ask a question? Um, when you respond to an emergency, you have a paramedic on? Yes. And when Daniel or anybody else responds, there's an EMT hopefully, but that's about the level? A medical certified person, yeah, whether it's a Vermont first responder or higher. But you have the para, para, um, paramedic paramedics respond to most all, all calls? Yeah, ideally we, we well, outside this last few months, um, we have a paramedic on each drug. Okay, Along and, that, and that's important PMT because if you have somebody critically ill, the paramedic can mm -hmm. inject painkillers and whatever yeah. else they, they might have need. have a much, much larger scope of right. practice. Whereas an EMT can just basically maybe stabilize and hold the hand, is that it? Um, they can do quite a bit as well, but um, there isn't much for pain management. Um, and some of the biggest things that I see in our area is being able to identify a heart attack. Right. And then get them directly to the facility to get them to um, maybe strokes or... Um, but EM, you know, EMT can also do that. They just aren't going to get start that treatment to fix it before they get there. Right. They can manage pain with nitro, but um, being able to give those drugs that actually change the chemicals of the heart to help at the medic level. Because I know in some, you know, up in Mad River Valley, um, they run their um, trucks with um, EMTs basically, <laughs> and when they need to do a Critical transfer. They've got to have somebody from Barry meet them. I think and yep. tra transfer. Yeah, person. we've intercepted a few times. They happen to be Mad River, not from the so much ski area, but from the Gulf. Right. Um, if we get, they'll call us, intercept. But then there's always that time element. It's 45 minutes for you to get wherever you got to go. Mm -hmm. And every time we intercept another service, we're down a truck then for that time frame as well. Right. Um, first branch in South Burlington. Sometimes we can. Switch crews where the medical jump in will take one of their members, and then we still have an ambulance in the district. Um, in the district is five services counting two first response services, Valley and Barnard. Um, so at any given time in their 16 towns, we only have four trucks that are staffed. Mm -hmm. So quite often, three out of four are out somewhere. And that's including first branch of South Burlington, so that's Chelsea, Sharon, that whole area. So they have first responders. They have uh, first branch in South Burlington are both transporting ambulances. Okay. Um, right now, if there's a medical emergency, somebody from the fire department or from uh, the first responders respond, whether it's in their toilet or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. but they got to wait for you guys to come over to the do transport, any yeah. transport or any, um, uh, any, any advanced care, whatever. Yeah. And, uh, Valley is an A-level licensed service now and fire. So the 
if there's an A or somebody that I can start IV means or they can start some care ahead of time. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what the value roster is, but and, uh, and your district goes from it goes from Washington, essentially, I guess, to Middlebury or Ripton. Um left to right. And then up and down we cover Brookfield to Sharon, um, the district. Um, you don't go down to White River? Nope, they have their own. Okay. Um, in Hartford and Upper Valley. Upper but River. still a large district, a large, including yeah. I 89. Yeah. Mm. I understand. Yeah. So obviously, in you know, our our concern here and, and desire here is to have the optimal protection for mm -hmm. people in our town and our neighboring towns. Um, I know now with Bethel Mountain Road being closed, it makes it even, you know, that step more remote and that's going to change, but yes. it'll probably change back again mm -hmm. in the future. Hopefully by the end of the month. Yeah. Um, well. I guess the, um, so the, the old, um, White River the rescue squad that that um, was struggling for years and and finally um, gave up the ghost and that was how was your relationship with them when they were here? The valley, they, yeah, the valley valley rescue was, squad. Wasn't that because you've been here? There was for, there was no issues between the two services. No, no. Um, but they were independent. I I want to go yep. back on that too. Yep. Yeah. Valley was set up the exact same way where we ran that for ten years as well. Um, that ended about ten years ago. Twenty fourteen. Yeah. Okay. Twenty fourteen. Exactly. Um, and they kept they kept the ambulance on the side. And was it a personnel issue too that you had a? I well, I got off Valley when I moved to New Hampshire just before that. Um, but it was it was volunteer based and then as volunteerism kind of shrunk um they hired a full-time administrator and then they hired a part-time driver and then they got the way they hired full-time attendants because they just didn't have the, the workforce volunteers during the day because they have their own job um and then at some point the cost just goes up so yeah you gotta justify it um, and there's a number of services in the state that aren't right there right now yeah so part of what has made it work for you over the mountain now is just the the it is a large area that you're covering, but it's that yeah, our coverage area is a little over 550 square miles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some, so some Granville difference. has the Valley Rescue Squad, and it's incorporated within their fire department. Um, so they they seem to have personnel in their fire department that cross train over. Um, do you see the other fire departments? And and I'm going to be speaking about not just Hancock, Granville, Rochester. I'd like to bring Stockbridge into that conversation as well, um, because they have a small fast squad within their fire department. Is, is that yeah, the like infrastructure that we should be thinking about moving well, into? Pittsfield and Stockbridge are both licensed under WERVA currently they don't have their own license okay so all their personnel are under warva for their licenses and so forth so is that a direction that that rochester and hancock should be well thinking it, about it's an option um until the budget meeting i thought everybody was kind of on the same page over here um but over well, i started it pre-covid and then of course covid kind of screwed everything up um but this last year I was able to finalize it with the state um, where we can license first responders in any of our towns um, as long as they're affiliated with us. And then we could put first response in any of the towns we cover. Um, in the past, the problem was you had to join the fire department to be covered under their insurance. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have to take all the fire classes with it. And the ones that were just interested in the medical side didn't want to do the fire. Um, so a lot of those, uh, Brookfield had a, a number of people that kind of started the conversation. Um, so now we have it set up to where we can just, if Bethel wants to do a first response, then we just get the, the Vermont first responder course, which we can teach now. Um, we have some members that can teach it. And the biggest hurdle with that is just getting the right personnel toned out for the right town. 
um, in my thought process, and I haven't talked to any, really any of the fire departments there yet, but if a town wanted to do it, we could kind of sister with their fire department because every first responder is going to need a pager, a radio, personal protective equipment, like a coat and so mm -hmm. forth, and a bag. Um, then each town could invest into that, into their fire department, and then if it ever disbanded or they didn't have the members, that money's already back in their fire department for those extra radios and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we got to tone the somewhere in Bethel, if we would just tone out the fire department as first responders. You could even, or however the fire department want to do it, I guess. Um, but we'd say Bethel Fire Department's first response, please respond to this address. And then we could capture those invested in, in that town. Mm -hmm. um, because that was, we've always had first response or something on this air side of our coverage area. Well, we still do all the way down to Pittsfield and then into Barnard. But the whole east side of our coverage area is just when we get there, we're the first ones there. Mm -hmm. And, and so first response is the people that huge. in Pittsfield and Stockbridge, um, do, do they go to like meetings to your facility for additional training? And not yet. Um that is the plan. Um, I haven't sat down with them yet. Um but to be licensed under us, we, we have to have certain guidelines that they have to meet, meet um, for us to be able to license them. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's certain trainings, the state has 10 or 14 um, e-learning that they require every year for anybody certified. Mm -hmm. um, so we can give that to the members and keep track of their training. So when it comes time to research, we can just hopefully have a nice little packet for them that they could submit and keep their license going. Right. Um, how, how does it work now if <clears throat> I'm in Granville, I dial 911 for medical emergency? Mm -hmm. Who does the dispatcher send that to? Both. As far as get where the phone call goes or once a 911? Who's the responder? <laughs> when I call 911 and I'm up there and I have a heart attack or something, you know? Yeah. They, so they, they, they tone out both. Huh? They tone out both Granville and Werva. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, I think most of the time it's Werva because that's who is licensed to transport the state. Right. Um, but the 911 call will go to Rockingham and then they'll go from there to, to us. To you. And then right. you would call Granville? Or how, how does that work? Um, well, at this point, at this point, we make sure Granville is notified, but for the most part, they get toned the same time we do. Okay. And in that and that works the same way in Barnard and the other town? Yep. Okay. Yep. Whether they have a, a, an umbrella organization under you or not? Uh, well, the towns that don't, they don't have any first response. They don't get notified. Okay, just you. So if we get go to, to Bethel because they don't have first response. Okay. We just go to Bethel. If we need extra help, we'll call the fire department and we'll just get fire personnel to come for manpower or something like that. So when, so where this conversation is going kind of is we're, concerned about the duplication of our efforts when well, we're, we're we're signed up with um with you know Werva uh, mm -hmm. for a pretty significant sum for the the real overreaching care and then and Dan you've got um things started up in in Granville and it's um and that's cost of that is ramping up uh, to what I'm curious, have you know, have you given thought or you, do you see it in the future of folding in underneath Werva to get some, you know, would that bring us some efficiency and, and give you more um, support for what you've got going there in Granville? Um, you know, that's Matt, that's something that Matt and I started to discuss. Um, and there's some questions that both he and I have that we need to do some research on. I think it it opens up a lot of gray area um, and we just need to sort through those those questions. Um, I, I think as a volunteer in EMS, I don't know as there's necessarily a place in White River for volunteers. Uh, but there's definitely a place in Valley Rescue and Granville Fire for those volunteers, um, you know, and and there always will be. Uh, we're 
we're not going to be able to pay somebody to be on call. Um, we're, we are going to have to rely on volunteer. Um, and, you know, I, I don't see the Valley Rescue Squad effort and White River Valley Ambulance as a duplication of efforts or services. Uh, the two services complement each other and we just live in a, in a geographically difficult area um, and the challenges that white river and other ambulance services are facing we need to ramp up the number of resources available so that we can maintain a level of the level of service that we expect yeah, that's what I was wondering if if you join forces with them, if it would make it easier to ramp up that level of of service and and, and support or not. But I guess no. that's a conversation for for you guys. We're just yeah. um, you but, know, but you do this already with some of the other towns. Yeah, yeah, that's what made me ask that question yeah. because and none of this, the first response has any monetary reimbursement. Right. Yeah. So yeah, they're, they're, they're the same the fire department itself and not yeah. right. They are volunteers. Yeah. We just help with the medical side. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. and in the past we've done training. They they come to our trainings and stuff like that. Um but they don't have any mobility issues with they have no one ambulances or anything. No. Nope. Right. No. Nope. Um Stockbridge is all personal vehicles. Um Pittsfield has a first responder vehicle, so to speak, I guess, that goes to most of the scenes. And they do that just to have one place for equipment and everybody doesn't have a bag. Yeah. And you have nothing to do with that equipment? No. No, um, the way it works is they they bought the initial equipment, the disposable stuff like oxygen masks and sea collars and so forth. And most of the time we can just replace that off the truck when we're at that scene. So they use an oxygen mask whatever they use for disposables, we'll just take it off the truck and hand it back. And then kind of works out that way because we can bill for that and then mm -hmm. they take what we already paid for as well. Yeah. Um, so it's just the initial, I think would be the only, the big expense of just getting the equipment the first time um, for each town or whoever town would want to do that. Um, just so we don't have towns that aren't in the program at Werba. Mm -hmm. Having to pay for another town for its response. Yes. Um, which is why I kind of went with the loop of teaming up with the fire departments. That way they can put some money back into their own towns with the radios and the. And the right. Right. Um, which is basically how it would would work with Granville because they're, they're already teamed up with their fire department. And, yeah. 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 Granville has their own license. Um, so I'm not sure how the inner workings of that service is as much, but um, I designed it for the service or the town that didn't have anything, and then but yeah, yeah. you have to open to everybody. Four ambulances, three, three, and two, how, two were staff. Okay, one how, usually out of service. <laughs> two <laughs> broken down, but we do have three. Yeah. So how, how often? Um, is it often that you have both of them out on a call? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Yep. Um, so you rely on some of these other first responders? We do. Um, it's often we have two out at once. It's not as often that we need third right down in the next. Okay. What? Not that the devil? <laughs> we've, we've had days where we've had seven ambulances in our district with two being out of district coming in mutually. Um, I mean, we're on 89, so one one bus rent would. Right. Use all of our capability in yeah. the district and probably other districts. Sure. Wow. Frank, do you have any questions for Dan or Matt? You're on mute, Frank. No, I, I think this is very informative. I think it's uh, something that we need to discuss and, and figure out going forward what our path should be here. Um, I I just think that it's a good conversation to have, and it's and I'm glad that that uh, 
other towns were invited and the select person from Granville was there and uh, we can uh, take it as advisement and figure out where the town needs to go. I'm not sure what the fire department in Rochester is working towards or if they are working towards anything. I think that's a discussion that we need to have with them and uh, we'll go from there. I think anyway, that's my take. Rob, what do you think? You're our a Rochester advisor to the board of My the sense, Oleski Squad. I'm probably the least informed here on this. It's very complicated. The uh, state involvement is complicated. The licensing and training is complicated. I, I feel, speaking from a position of towering ignorance on the subject, that the, that the Granville is sort of a project has kind of in motion. How, how it could effectively interface with you guys, I'm not sure. If they're all volunteer and you're not, what can you give? Well, we we don't pay for first response or first. We so how how could a, how so could a no partnership benefit? There. I guess I'm I'm not. How could it benefit you, and how could it benefit the the first responders? If that's if the discussion is how can you roll the two organizations together to save money? If that's what. Well, we have everything established already. All the training spreadsheets keep track of everybody's hours and that process. Um, I mean, ideally, it's all about the patient outcome. So you have to call 911. It's that time between anybody with medical training gets to you is going to help. Um, and I think this valley is in need of first response of one sort or another. Um, all towns should have it early, but. Um, yeah, I was going to say, you know, we're all getting older. Right. And we're all yeah. going to have medical emergencies. Mm -hmm. and, you know, um, if it takes 45 minutes to get somebody there, I'm dead. But yeah. the same thing happens to my house up on the hill. You know, if it catches on fire, probably not going to last long. Mm -hmm. But given the budget conversation was happening earlier, if, if and and uh, uh, Dan is moving the project forward, as far as I know, uh, and, and in a direction uh, with a, a two-year plan. So... Uh, so do I understand that you guys that, uh, wanted to have this conversation with Matt to see if costs could be lowered? Is that why? Matt wanted to have well, a brought, conversation with I got quite a few questions on it. Um, and at the budget meeting, it dawned on me that everybody wasn't really on the same page because mm -hmm. um, I've had calls from Hancock as well, wondering if I knew what was going on with Valley. Um, and I didn't because I wasn't sure what was going on. So I suggested to the Rochester Budget Committee that the towns need to get together so we can come up with what the same goal versus two entities trying to do the same thing. But is that a conversation for the towns or for the two entities? I, I mean, that's what I'm confused. All about. of the above. All of the above. Um, yeah, because it's it, it's pretty complicated. So if if you if you could wave your magic wand tomorrow, what would you do? Would you put? I have an ambulance in every town. Yeah, but yeah. would you put, <laughs> would you put the two uh, organizations together, or would you would you see it uh, this just operating as an independent satellite in our valley? What would work best for you from a professional standpoint in terms of health outcomes? I guess it doesn't matter who the first response is, as long as they have a good system and they can keep the system in place. Um, the, the question that I had was. The goal was a transporting ambulance in two years. So you get that's a good goal to have, but in two years you might have an ambulance, but you're not gonna have the personnel to volunteer to run it. So then you're gonna be back into the cycle of paying somebody to possibly be there or shut it down. But that's an outcome we don't know because it hasn't been two years. So that's what you're planning on. Like you that. know, so well no, I'm just I'm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so it was a little bit like Valley Rescue. Well, right. Trying to run it as an all volunteer organization. Again. And I'm not saying it won't work, but in two the questions years, I'm getting at the station or from people is I didn't have any answers, and, yeah. and well, some of them were town officials. In two years, we're going, uh, Daniel's planning on being on a billing platform as well. Um, so that is a duplication of efforts because he's going to, there's, there's a cost mm -hmm. when you start billing, billing, and you already have that infrastructure in place. So is that a goal that is duplicating the efforts? It's just taking the care out of it just 
two billing platforms, um, we would be paying for their billing platform and your billing platform and no, um, only one ambulance service can bill on patient. So whoever transports, so there won't be two bills if <clears throat> an ambulance service needs an intercept. Right. But, but he would it's... still need to have that billing platform in place to do his billing. If, billed, if, yeah. if he was a satellite under you, all of the billing would go through you. Yeah, there's there's many anyway, different there's many different billing platforms. Some of them um, just work off of a percentage rate on whatever they bill. So if they don't bill anything, they don't make anything. Right. Yeah, and right now as a first responder, can you bill insurance companies? Uh, as a first response entity, no. Black most call on. If, if we were a transport entity, then yes, we could bill. My understanding is we can bill for first response, but that's that's a whole other world to discuss. Yeah. But we're going down that road in a couple of years, so perhaps the discussion mm -hmm. should start now. Yeah. What's your opinion, Dan, about the question? Two, two organizations versus one. What's your feeling? Well, uh, you know, I've I've been involved in emergency services now, serving the three town area for for over fifteen years, almost twenty now, um, and you know, I I think. My knee-jerk reaction is I would like to have a service that is exclusive to the three-town area. Uh, I I just think it's necessary to to have have an organization and a group of people that is dedicated to just our three towns to provide the level of service that we need. Um, you know we. Yeah, you know, it's it's water under the bridge, but you know we've when Valley Rescue left, the promise was that we would have an ambulance stationed in the Route 100 corridor, and that was taken away from us. Now, I I think if there is a viable solution to have an ambulance, another resource in our area, we need to. We need to do it. So your vote would be to have two independent organizations rather than one. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. And Matt, would you would you agree with that? Would you? you I don't know? think you can afford it. You think it would be too expensive? Yeah, the Valley Rescue shut down once already from it. Right, and the um, state's not supporting small. Well, if you guys just handed out, sorry, Dan, I didn't have a online version, but I can mail it to you. Um, it's last year's call count, um, and at the Ooh, bottom, I just broke out the valley. Um, in the three towns total, there were 159 calls, and it was noticed that actually included the no transport into that as well. But that bill to help with our average bill rate, um, the gross bill would be 78,000, and on our percentage that we're recouping, um, it works out to be about 44,600. On the insurance knockdowns and all? Yes. Um, so it's actually a little less than that because there's no transport in there. But um, now people don't have a choice either. Right? If I have a heart attack and you come pick me up, I can't scribble with a bill. You know, if you call them dark, yeah, you don't ask if you're insured ahead of time. Right. <laughs> right. If DART comes in, it's a $30,000 bill to get your job. Oh, no, it's probably 50, 60. 50, okay, yeah. that's years ago. <laughs> yeah. but, um... So when Valley Rescue left here, weren't we paying somewhere, we were looking at around 130000 Yeah. We were up over 120, yeah. yeah. And it just was... Just... And that and that's why Valley Rescue really left because we could not do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Dan is talking about a volunteer organization. 
that. I mean, I think uh, the original Valley Rescue that got, was got volunteer freaking... until it, there were lack of volunteers, yeah, so and the only attraction was the play. And then that's when they and there were no volunteers and anymore for right. anything. It was a volunteer. <laughs> well, Dan's got Dan's got a he's he's got a roster of people now. I guess my question is: Are you are you trying to basically put a red flag about a, a danger coming towards us? Meaning, in two years' time, you can't afford to do this. Is that your basic message? Because we just want everybody to be aware. Yeah. Um, because, like I said, everybody in the state are having issues with volunteers, right. and Williamstown just shut down the first of the year, mm -hmm. and they do almost six hundred calls a year. They couldn't get help to staff. So Barry Town just took their whole area over. If you have the ambulance there, then you're going to be lacking having a paramedic coming on the road immediately. Okay, I'm not well, going to help the way. But. Yeah, again, the idea with what we're proposing is that we are still going to be the first response entity to manage the situation until White River Valley arrives. So you're still gonna have that paramedic level care. What the idea behind having an ambulance in the valley was to address the 10% of the time that White River Valley is unavailable for the emergency. That way we are not left on scene for over an hour in some cases, waiting for the next due ambulance service to come from Middlebury, Mad River, or South Royalton. So that that was the entire premise of this project. I'm not aware of a 10% non-response rate yeah. from Werva. It's hard for me to get those numbers because we just don't get toned. They go right to mutual aid because mm -hmm. dispatchers know when we're all out. Mm -hmm. So we'll just say get mutual aid, and we're not even sure sometimes who it is coming. Typically, the valley is either Middlebury, Brandon, sometimes brought up and depending on who it is. But, okay. Um, okay. So are you saying it's an unrealistic goal to try to have an ambulance on this side of the valley? No, I don't think so. But can you guarantee you're going to have 100 volunteers in the next five years? Oh, I, I can't guarantee that I'm going to make a call. That, 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 that is expensive. Like I said, I'm not against it or for it, but with the question mm -hmm. that I'm getting, it just seems like there is a lot of unknowns and mm -hmm. what direction mm -hmm. everything was going. Mm -hmm. um, now, there's also a a, a fact that um, Rochester is closer to Werva. Then Hancock and Granville. So there's there's added 10 minutes to the response time for those two towns. Um, so you those two towns might have a different opinion than Rochester, but we've always carried Hancock and Granville as our neighboring towns. So we've always thought of ourselves as the valley. We would like to also consider Stockbridge as part of our value too. I'll say that again. Um, so we're we're the ones that are that are here saying what does everyone think because we're all in this together is what what I'd like to say and um, we, we want to hear it if it's you know the good the bad the ugly or the facts you know where where are we and we don't need to dance one against the other we just would like to coordinate everything and get get the right direction going instead of two directions or opposing directions mm -hmm. or anything like that. Um, we need a plan. Daniel, you, you just said that you would, again, even in two years or whatever, still be the primary first responders, but not so much in transport. Right, White River Valley would still be the primary ambulance service. Now, our, our goal is to address the situations where White River Valley is not available for the call, that would allow us to initiate transport. Or it might be a situation where the patient is in critical condition and we need to initiate transport before Werba arrives and meet them somewhere between the incident and the hospital. 
you know, this would give us a vehicle to make that happen. Where right now, we're just waiting on scene, you know, as you said earlier, just holding their hand. Um, yeah. But so with that, without a complete ambulance service, you you can't transport. Now, if I have a heart attack, somebody can take me to the hospital. But you can't do that. Not right Correct. now. No, no not right now. So the, tell me if I'm right, and forgive me if I, I'm, I'm confused. Are you saying your concern is you don't think, looking two years ahead, uh, you don't see uh, enough volunteers accumulating to make this work? I didn't say that. I don't know if that's the case, but well, if you, you take you, a state you, average, no. Yeah. You know, I yeah. can, you know, we had, we, have, we only had a couple, we only had a couple volunteers uh, when we first started delivering first response to the Tri-Town area. Um, and today we have over 20 that are licensed, certified on our roster. Um, so I, I think you do have to look at the trend and the track record that we have. Um, we have been successful in recruiting and retaining volunteers and improving their licensure. Uh, and that's only going to continue uh, to improve as as time goes on. What do you think about that? I hope, I hope it works. <laughs> Dan, what does license yeah, certified mean? So any any of our people that are delivering medical care have to be licensed through the state of Vermont Department of EMS. So what I'm what I'm saying is we have 20 or so that are licensed through Vermont EMS to provide care. And there's five levels of licenses. Vermont first responder, EMT, AEMT, paramedic and critical care paramedic. You have to be a minimum of an EMT to be in the back with a patient on a transport. Okay. Um, v first can first response and drive. Um, that scope for the V, sorry, Vermont first responder is V first. Um, it's a very minimal certification. Um, it is a good certification and it's a great stepping stone, um, but it's a limited scope of practice. Um, can't do vitals. Can't. There's some limitations, but they developed that because now an EMT course is 160, 70 hours. So you're getting somebody that wants to try something else and then you spend six months in a course and then you have the training to keep your certification just to find out that they may or may not like it. Um, how, how many of the 20, Dan, are EMTs? Um, my memory is a little rusty. Um, I I believe we have six uh, at the EMT level or higher. We do have uh, one EMTA, so that individual can actually establish an IV and deliver different medications. Um, and we have three who are currently enrolled in an EMT class. So they they're due to finish up the EMT class uh, in early April. Who pays for that training? Uh, the fire department, Valley Rescue. Excuse me. Are there requirements to have a certain number of personnel on an ambulance? Yeah, you need to have at least an EMT in the back of the ambulance with the patient. And then the driver needs to be licensed at any any level that the state recognizes. So two two personnel total at a minimum. We've driven the ambulance before. Yes. But there's always right. circumstances that the gray area takes place. So Daniel, all 20 of your um, 
rescue squad personnel are members of the fire department? Granville Fire Department? There are some who choose to only do medical and they're part of Valley Rescue. Um, and there's others that are cross-trained, so they do medical and fire and rescue. Um, so Valley Rescue has coverage, coverages on those personnel that are not part of the fire department independently? It's it's all under the Granville Fire Department. They're They're recognized under that entity. Valley Rescue Squad is a trade name registered to the Granville Volunteer Fire Department. But you have members in all three towns, right, Dan? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. But they're all trained and go through your certification. Yep, that's correct. So, uh, Coordination and cooperation between the two outfits is extremely important, obviously. Yeah. So um, it sounds to me, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that if you sort of have two different opinions working here. Dan has worked out a plan looking two years ahead. There's no guarantee that this will work at all, but he's laid out a plan. He's got some, and you're concerned about that plan because you you you're, you don't, you can't see for, you're not comfortable enough that enough volunteers will. Well, here's that the way I'm seeing the not him. We're also work. Yeah. But if you look at the rest of the state and the number of yes. services that are merging, shutting down, or going more paid and their budget increases, <laughs> you're betting against the odds. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I would love to see it work and I'd be a huge supporter and fan to have another ambulance in our district. But I, it's going to be expensive. Uh, so would your recommendation be to back away from it or to have a longer no, timeline? I, or to I am more than happy to go either direction. Mm -hmm. But from the phone calls I've heard from every town, nobody was on the same page. Right. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I've had calls from our, well, our Hancock rep for White River Valley had questions on valley or dan's budget and valley rescue which i hadn't seen and i told her that and then i've had calls from well all three counts just asking and it just it's so, hard to give an answer one way or the other well, and details right. or in that budget and when plan or what the valley wants right but would you call that a, a planning problem or a communications problem i think it just Somebody needs to have an initial talk and say, "What do we want? What do we want to look like in five and years?" And that's what we're starting here, yeah. right? Yeah. And if it's five years from now, you'd like to see an ambulance cover the five towns. Very easy to do, but I don't know what the costs are going to be. If you can get a volunteer base of first responders and get thirty or forty in the five towns, you might be able to put an ambulance over here and. Get somebody to respond or is available that day. And, um, but having two different directions from two different services and three different towns, you can't plan anything. Well, you have just put your letter together for the town report talking about your aging volunteers. <laughs> it will be the same there ever. I mean, volunteers, there's not a lot of them that want to put the time into everything. Just I mean, he's, if he's got 20 on there, how many are really active? I mean, I can hear your calls and you're getting like maybe four to five different people answering them. That's a long ways from 20. Especially during the day. No. Yeah, daytime is tough. Yeah, I mean, it quite works. I mean, our fire department has been really fortunate because during the day, we're still putting 10 to 12 people at a scene. Um, excuse me, I have to get off because I have, it's time for me to take some medicine, but I'll, I'll check in with you ladies at the office tomorrow for anything else I've missed. Thank Sounds you. Sounds good, Martha. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. What is your total budget about? 1.8. And how much of that is taxpayer supported? 900. So about, about, about a million. Almost. 
No more than half the taxpayer, and the rest is insurance and bill. The rest is it. Um, like you say, you only get 50 cents on the dollar when you're billing. Mm -hmm. um, I'll say now, but yeah, it's like 779, I think, is what we get back from revenue, and then the remainder of the budget goes to the town for going. You don't do a whole lot of cookie sales and stuff like that. <laughs> no, I mean, basically, yeah. no. You're out on the ambulance. Well, looking for volunteers. Looking for volunteers. <laughs> right. Volunteers sell no, cookies. You don't, yeah. you don't need a certification for that. Just, just to be clear, I am not favoring one way or the other, but just to assist, to... I need a direction to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, that explain how bulk services will work. Well, that was our concern: is just to be, you know committing to two separate services and wanting to make sure that they were spending the, you know, spending the money wisely. I mean, pri the primary thing is that we're getting the is best service as we can to protect people in, in, in these towns, but um, efficiency is key. And, and that's, um, and we've been, down the road with, I don't know if it's good that you, Dan, that you picked the Valley Rescue Squad as a name that's got the the memories of the last one that kind of um, didn't pan out so well. But but um, I guess we're just encouraging you to really keep your um, keep the options open and, and um, be as efficient and, and practical as possible, you know, looking into the future. And some some people have seen um, the budget from last year to this year go up by forty percent. Um, the number is not huge, um, but it was still a forty percent increase over what was requested last year. So if the trend continues to go, let's say twenty to fifty percent more each year over last year, five years from now we will be down the road making a really hard decision, and we don't want to do that. We want right. we want to get on the plane right now. Uh, the um we have we've not we haven't had the presentation of the two year five year program yet. So um, I'm a little naive with that. But um the what 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 would be the um danger in just keeping it the way it is where we have first responders and because if, if it's less than ten percent of the calls don't get an ambulance, is it really worth the expense to have an ambulance? They get an ambulance, they just might be from Middlebury, and that really it might sure. it might take ten minutes longer. Well, no, that would it's our people have been waiting in some cases upwards of an hour for the next arriving ambulance to arrive. Um, so, yeah, it's it's only ten percent of the time, but if it's your call and your yeah. emergency, that that hour wait time makes a huge difference when when the time that you dial 911 to the time you arrive in a hospital is 2 hours i think that is totally unacceptable uh i would i would like to have another option uh at our disposal and yeah and understood that uh you know obviously we can't just sign up for for a service and uh, hand over a blank check, you know, I I get there's budgetary constraints, and that's that's where our service is going to have to be creative in how we fund uh, the budget, um, you know. And I I think there is a path forward here. Uh, it might not be totally clear at this point, um, you know. We the reason that it went up by 33% for all three towns is just because we are ramping up to be a transport service. Uh, to be a first response service, it could be scaled back. Um, but, you know, if, if we are going to work in the direction of a transport service, then, you know, there's, there's going to need to be some initial funding. Uh, and, you know, we can work out the budget, uh, what our projections are going to be for the years to come. Um, and, and of course, you know, the all important issue of how do we staff it? You know, we, 
bringing bringing a really clear plan to the table, I think that would put all of your minds at ease. So that's that's something that we can sit down and work on um, as we progress through this the rest of this year. Nice. It seems to me um, if you've been getting calls that you don't have answers for, mm -hmm. that really you and Dan should be spending some time so you really understand mm -hmm. what Dan has in mind and he, he really understands the limitations you're talking about because you two are the professionals here. Yeah. Uh, and, but I also um, need to know what the town want to do. Yeah, well, I, I, I guarantee you whatever it is is going to cost more money. And mm -hmm. so the, the question is, mm -hmm. how much is that 10% worth? You know, if it's my heart attack, mm -hmm. I can tell you how much that 10% is worth. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've had my life saved by an ambulance. So, uh, but it's going to cost money. It's yeah. Whatever it is is going to cost money. If you start hiring uh, uh, professional people, it's really going to cost a lot of money. If Dan can make the thing work with uh, volunteers, as he's suggesting, well, then that's another, uh, another uh, question. But... It's still going to cost more money. Mm -hmm. Seems to me if you two guys could kind of put your heads together and, and at least define the universe of money that you're talking about, you might feel more or less comfortable. I don't know. Might, you might feel less comfortable. Oh, I'm not you know, uncomfortable, but like uh, but you hear, you hear what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I, I think if they, if you two guys could then come back to the to the towns with what you thought were were was an option or two. Uh, well, we just wanted to make sure that we're spending money on a coordinated, focused, well thought out mm -hmm. system and service. Yeah, and I you think know. that's I think that's yeah. Mark's good idea. Yeah. Well, and I appreciate your your uh, bringing this forward and taking your time and everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thank you. Frank, I think Frank's got something. Frank. Right? Yeah, I do think that we need to have some serious thought about how we go forward. And um, I think uh, in respect to the other two towns also, uh, there needs to be some open communication and some more uh, thoughtful planning moving moving in whatever direction seems to go. I, I do think the costs are really going to be a, a major factor. I mean, you take a 10% increase or close to that in Werva this year, uh, coupled with this increase too, puts us up to almost where we were with the Valley Rescue Squad originally already. Um, so I, you know, we have to really be careful. We're not just duplicating what failed in the past. I mean, that's, you know, we need to learn from history here too. So, I think some serious consideration needs to be placed whether how we move forward here. That's my take. I would say my experience with Dan in this project is that a lot of plannings, he's doing a lot of thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think Dan's out there, you know, on his own uh, pulling stuff out of the air. Uh, but I think the two organizations, so critical that the two organizations really are on the same page that, that, uh, if you two guys can spend some more time together, I think there might be more clarity. What do you want for a goal? To have a better, uh, that both parties be more comfortable with what a two-year plan is, or three-year plan is, or five-year, whatever it is. I mean, you want to put your heads together, and a two-year plan is unreasonable, mm -hmm. then, then, then what happens to it? But I, I, what I'm hearing for you is that you're not fully informed. If people are calling you up and say, well, what's what's going on? You don't know. You're not, then you're, and, and you know, Dan, and I've, I've been spending time with Dan. I have a lot of confidence in what Dan's doing, but I'm not a professional like you are. So uh, I just get, get a sense that there may be a communications thing working there. Whether the whole thing is a terrible idea or not, I don't know. But I do know that the, having a, an ambulance on this side of the mountain is a real good yeah, idea. Yeah, it is. Oh, I don't disagree with that. Yeah, yeah. But the chances of that happening through you guys is slim to nut. No. Putting an ambulance over here. We could do it. It would just be an added expense to the three towns that to the three towns because they couldn't do build ten towns, put an ambulance over here. Yeah, well, that's that wouldn't go over well. My question: if the, if <laughs> you, but, working with the energy Dan's putting in here would be a more efficient way to to make that happen or not? And I guess that's the conversation you know that yeah, you mean, guys have to it decide. Is, the end goal might be if the end goal is going to transport and. Transporting licensed service on its own entity, yeah. then it's going to take three towns from Warba as well. Mm -hmm. And then we wouldn't 
Now, Warbler wouldn't come over, it would just be an intercept immediate. Right. Mm. Um, no, that's there, interesting. There is okay. a different way that we can set that up, Matt. Mm -hmm. And I had already discussed mm -hmm. that with you. Uh, Granville can have Valley Rescue, excuse me, the name change hasn't quite sunk in yet. Uh, Valley Rescue can have a small service area that would not um, pull the revenue stream from White River Valley. Um, and we can still have an agreement with White River to first respond to the remaining service area uh, and be that backup ambulance. So we we don't have to sever ties with White River at all. Um, this would just be an added service in the area, another resource. Uh, you know, and that's something that I've already discussed with uh, Vermont EMS. So there is a path forward there. Um, if you get it that way, that would take your revenue that you're anticipating on to help cover your budget. Yeah. Well, you know, I think there's stuff I think that get out. Yeah. 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 Well, there's, I don't think. We're going to figure it all out tonight, but this is a good start to the conversation. But it's um, I guess I just really um, want to encourage you, Dan, to really you know um, look at the big picture here and and really um, you know I think that you could probably get what you're hoping to do, but um, no, if you could let go of the independence of it, it might. Be better in the long run but that's just my take that's why we're starting this conversation to get more information out here and you know not um, telling you what to do but that's well, why there's all these questions you know yeah well if um you know i think a lot of that if we fell under white river valley um a lot of that is going to come down to whether the volunteers are willing to do that um and that's where we need to take a look at White River and their setup and what that would look like as members of White River Valley. Uh, you know, and I'm I'm not yeah. saying that, you know, I'm completely ruling that out. Uh, you know, absolutely, it would make my life a whole lot easier if Matt just oversaw everything. Uh, you know, but I... Yeah, I think there's there's a lot of questions that need to be answered before we can really commit to that yeah. direction. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's definitely worth um, investigating, I think, because it's um, efficiency is kind of rules the day, and and you know the um, I think Slatmore should be in on it. Yeah, well, at least one yeah. member. So, do we want to set up maybe a uh, regular meeting of some kind over the course of the of this calendar year, just to keep this discussion going. Regular meeting with like this one, or regular meeting with Matt? Uh, probably, probably a uh, a smaller group, maybe a representative appointed by each of the select boards, uh, Matt and myself. Kind of like what we had started. <laughs> Frank's not here. No, no well, well, Rob, we've kind of had that set up now with um, Rob as being our representative to, to Granville um, to, to meet with you. So it basically would be expanding upon, upon that. The board member we already supply to you, so you would be opening up to you just, Matt. It just bring Matt into that. Into yeah, just bring yeah. Matt into that yeah. conversation. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a hand cut. The yeah. Guy, yeah. And then right. do you read back to the yeah. select board or yeah. to report back? Yeah. Whatever you want. Yeah. Just so then that way they're kept in right. the loop. Right. Keep the well, conversation well, alive. To be honest with you, my, in my sense is it would be a, a better use of time just for Matt, for the two professionals to, to hammer out what they're comfortable with. And I mean, if, yeah, they're right. I mean, they're not. 
governed by open <laughs> meeting laws. They can get together and talk, right. talk yeah. things over yeah. and work out certain details and then make a presentation or or bring us in on that conversation when it comes down to it. Okay. Yeah. yeah so. One of the other things that, even if you took all the money that the three towns pay you now to provide mm -hmm. service, and we took that all together and put it into our three town ambulatory service, it would go bankrupt almost right away. Yes. We don't have the people, we don't have the, yeah. the resources right. to do it. You're right. And yeah. you wouldn't have there, 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 50 there, years there, to build that infrastructure. <laughs> Right. Clearly, no, it wouldn't be enough to operate. So, I mean, it's definitely a problem. Our insurance loan is almost 80,000. Wow. Right. Well, I'd be um, love to be in on an ongoing conversation, but I think that's really a, a topic that, that you guys should, you know, investigate. Because, um, I mean, we want this to to work, Dan. We just want it to work, to really work. You know? Right. Yeah. But I think Dan wants it to work too. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, no, I, I know he I does. Really, I, I, I know I'm he sure does. You do yeah. It's, um, we're we're lucky that we have two passionate guys here that have got the skills and the drive to do this, and we thank you both. You know? yeah. So, so how should we leave it? You want to have it? So you would like to see options as. So yeah, Matt, let's uh, let's schedule some to uh, discuss some options under your umbrella. I think if you two guys, just, I mean, you know what the conversation is, and you guys are the professionals. If you put your heads together and you're completely honest, and Dan's completely honest, I mean, maybe there's not a way forward. I don't know, but but it sounds like between the two of you, you could at least come up with a couple of options. We could do this a high end, a low end, or whatever. Yeah, however yeah. you want to and do. we're looking at perhaps one budget rather than two. Right. So I'll leave that. I'll leave that up to these guys. Yeah. Well, let, let, let the professional guys make a recommendation, and then. Well, yeah. they're asking us what we think, so right. I'm That's giving right. them what yep. I think. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, um, Matt. Thank you, Dan. And that's off to everyone. Yeah. Thank you. And um, and you want to have regular reports back on what? Yeah, we'll we'd be love to, love to know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, over two years, three years, time, whatever it is, yeah, there's, there's going to have to be a regular. Yeah. Well, we again. don't want to have to call nine one one to find out what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not afraid to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Dan. Thank you. Um, thanks for calling in. Thank, yeah, thanks for being here. Oh, yeah. Today. I'll second the motion. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a good night. Thank you.